And welcome back again to the North American Qualifiers. Apologize for the short delay. Uh, had to eat dinner, haven't eaten anything all day long, and that was terrible. So we're going to actually go into this game now because we got a game. It is game number one. Oh my goodness gracious, of the only games that we're going to be taking a look at today. And it is, or rather, the only games that we're going to be watching of these two today. Uh, Radiant Team, not exactly sure who they are, but it's Team Red. Their final match that's going to pull them into the qualifiers, the final ones. Um, and we can take a little look at who these guys are. Terran Fear, Solomar 5300, Atlas as well. Probably a lot of them are around that area. Jobis, Tomexa, and of course... Pelican Jeff, the one, the only, the greatest, uh, and then all of the usual suspects on the side of the dire. Actually, did my settings get messed up again? Why is edge pan enabled? Why is open mic not on? Man, I swear, these computers, they got gremlins hanging out in them. That's some silliness. Silly, silly, silliness. <clears throat> so Jenkins, in the meantime, is going to be going for the TP out, trying to escape from it, but he does end up falling. They get that kill, and they bring it back up to 6-6. Six six. The big difference, though, and it kind of reminds me of that Meepo game that we saw earlier with Monib, is that he is just going to get farmed. He's going to get his items, and then eventually it's going to become nigh impossible for them to deal with it. So that kind of sucks. Uh, again, this is the match to determine if they go on to the next round. Um, we also do have the day two, I want to say, of the open qualifiers for China, which is going to be finishing off. Let me double check that that's correct. Um, and those have just started up as well. Wait, no, hold on. Opens. This is going to look choppy for a second. But, and China 2. Yeah, we're in the final days of the, the China qualifiers, um, where I believe we're going to be following the e-home games, because those are probably going to be the ones that are slightly better to watch, uh, in my estimation at least. So, excited to watch those, and we'll, uh, we'll be able to see what ends up happening there. But... The wraparound here. Looks like they were trying to get into position to take a fight. They might be able to catch Annihilate on the way out of here. Not sure if he realizes where they're at. The Spearbreaker charge out. He's farming for the moment. The pings come out. So they do realize that they had going to go in for a wraparound. Bottom lane is where there's a battle of Ruin. Trying to kill off and see if they can take down this uh, Juggernaut. The Shadow Blade working on rather the Invis Rune. Did he pick the... How did he get the Invis? Well, all right, Joe is going to end up getting chased down. A couple more right clicks should be enough to secure the kill. Get the stun, boom, and the acid spray for good measure. Maybe, possibly, is he getting out of this Avotic Shield? They turn around and they get the Omni for the kill. Juggernaut living on a prayer and staying alive. Oh, man. There's so many different ways that, that could have ended up coming out in the death for the Juggernaut, but... Did not end up working out, and now Brew split committed in the mid lane. The stun is going to get thrown out, and the sniper, well, actually is not going to be the one that goes there. Instead, it's Rubik who steals Acid Spray. Tries to turn it against him. The Hurl Boulder is going to come out just within range. The heal, is it going to be enough? Are they going to dive too deep again? They do find that kill. Waiting for the Blink Dagger, Jenkins is, and now he's going to be slowed down and probably killed off as well, though you do have OD and the Alchemist coming in there. They might be able to turn this back around for them, trying to take it out and find that kill. Needs one more to make it work. Atlas is going to have his ultimate popped in just a second. They have the Astral. Should ensure his secure retreat. They have a Sanity's Eclipse to use. They drop it down onto one. Monet barely able to walk away from that one. Needs to heal up through it, and he is going to be able to. So four end up falling, and Team Red pull a fast one. They make it work. Beautiful display coming out from them. Well, there's never been a time to dive too deep, apparently. 8 to 11, but you can see that this net worth is going to swing heavily and heavily into the favor of Team Red off the back of this. Radiance online. He has the armlet already. Went for the brown boots approach and now is going to be able to finish off those boots of travel. And you can see also red constantly moving around the map, farming up each of the jungle. They're just denying all of this experience and net worth away from the Radiant team. All the farm that they would want. And even pushing in the lanes while it's happening simultaneously. So they're just going to be starved out of this game. And it becomes so much more difficult for them to make it work. Arcane Rune on OD. If Ryu wanted to, he could pull him back in with the recall. Play it safe in that route. But 
Looks like instead they're going to recall in the Alchemist. And they want to pressure the tower. This is going to be a self-stun for Monib. Needs to be careful. They also have night time to use if they want to. Void. And it looks like they're just going to back out for the moment. We've seen snipers be really effective throughout this. Um, although in this matchup, you imagine that you pick it because you want to be able to shut down the OD, and that's not really looking to be the case. Spirit Breaker, charge through. Going to break it with the Void. Now they throw him back in to try and get a stun. Wasn't quite on time, and now this is the Bruce split used. That is going to be a dead Rubik, and they're going to be able to chase this down a bit further. Omni Slash on the other side, already used. Didn't end up doing all that much. They Astral Bloody Nine to keep him alive. He is going to end up charging away, but they find the Assassinate kill. The problem is you still have so much int that's going back in their favor. Do they have another Sandy's Eclipse? It's 30 seconds away, but they still should be able to run down this Jug, taking so much damage from that Pure, and right clicks. Nope. A Photic Shield again coming into play, and Annihilate is going to end up falling. Jenkins trying to do something. Save your buddy syndrome is not going going to end up working out too well for him as the chase is going to continue. Assassinate to keep vision. Couple more right clicks. They end up force staffing forward the Night Stalker, which is not going to allow them to get the kill because it was a little bit off the mark. They recall in the Alchemist. He wants to fight. They have the stolen stun on Rubik. Going to turn it now onto the Alk. A long duration one at that Ryu. Another blinding light in four seconds. They're run in with the Alk. That was not the play either. And he ends up dropping as the Ryu... Coddle ends up falling. The charge back in from Bloody Nine. Oh my god. Yeah, this is some silliness. Life has gone from bad to worse for the Radiant team as they try and get away with the Rubik. It might end up only turning. Well, he had a charge. That would have been pretty awesome. Didn't end up working out for him. Mid lane, possibly a chance to go in. You have a DDOD and Sanity's Eclipse. And boom, they take him down. So again, very scrappy engagements happening continuously in this. And it looks like Roshan is going to be next on the menu. Monib going for a Shadow Blade? What? Okay. Or at least the Shadow Amulet. Is he trying to like set up a trap or something? Is he have something? Yeah, is the Shadow Blade coming? And then also a Yasha. To my house. Very interesting. Not what I would have expected in the least bit. This also does beg the question. It looks like there was an OD in the safe lane for Annihilate. God, and oh, he is just so fat right now, the Alchemist. 15,000 net worth. They find, well, he's charging a creep wave, trying to push it out a little bit more. But Red, in complete control of this game, would be very shocked if they ended up losing out now. Where does he go? I mean, I think you can just play the normal route that you go for for this Alchemist build. Sometimes we've been seeing them go for more like of the fighty build. I think back to some of the older days, and what was it? It was like the Solar Crest Blink Dagger. The Shadow Blade kind of functions a little bit strangely because the only thing that they're really going to have trouble with is breaking high ground. And not that it's going to be that hard, but like Sniper, Rubik, these are heroes that can sometimes cause you a little bit of concern. And Shadow Blade doesn't really help to solve that problem. And now, if they run into Annihilate at the start of this, I don't know if they actually want to take this fight. He is going to be able to go for a self Astro if he wants to, but instead just goes for the Hurricane Pike, pushing it away. Sanity's Eclipse ready to drop on top of all of these heroes, maybe in some trouble. He ends up being able to keep off one from him. The Juggernaut has already gone down. And Abaddon, Ulti, there's the lift up in a hell of a lot of trouble. They're stacking up the damage, stacking up the in steal. The Arcane Orbs are hitting, and Abaddon is also hitting, but he's hitting the ground. So another combination comes through. Another team fight won, 18 to 11. I like the blade mail pickup. It's about the best that you could hope for right now. But Terran Fear, as you can see, with the stutter steps going across the map. And another kill on the sniper. Things are feeling quite, quite rough. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Well, 
Again, this is the round of 32 that we're currently in. Round of 16 is going to be... Excuse me. Got something going on there. Uh, round of 16 is going to be the finals. And Kato actually has Aghanims now. Well, movement up to the high ground. They do have another Bruce split in 30 seconds, but they're feeling confident with their movement right now. Ready to dive in for this one. Stun ends up hitting Monib. They're thinking about going in here. Annihilate taking a good bit of damage there. Have the assassinate onto him. Continue to cancel it as well. He's trying to be a bit of a pest, but he is still alive, still with the Aegis. And perfectly happy with the state of this game as it stands. Aegis still for two more minutes. They can go back, clear out the shrines now if they want to. Call comes for it. And the Sanj and Yasha pick. This is much more of that battle alchemist. Just trying to get up in your face. Run you down. And we're going to watch it right here in action. I mean, it makes what's already a very hard to kill hero also have more tank ability and the ability to, like, stay alive even further. It's, it's a ton of damage. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. <clears throat> well... Jenkins up there in front of everybody. They're going to head to the second shrine. This will ensure that if the game does happen to go to that second late game Roche moment, then they can at least off the back of it uh, take a, a, a cleaner fight, I should say. And this is uh, sometimes I feel like the problem with the Night Stalker pick. It's the same sort of thing that we were talking about earlier where... If you pick the Night Stalker only to deal with the Coddle and you don't have a game plan for him outside of that, it's not good enough. Like, you can still go Ags on Coddle and have access to all of his spells at all times, and he brings enough other things to the battle that you're kind of left with this otherwise sort of weak middling hero in a Night Stalker. So Team Red versus the random NA squad is into the favor of Team Red. And in the meantime, top lane is going to be pressured in. 22,000 net worth on this Alchemist right now, who does have his AC, I believe, coming out to him at this point. As well as a hood for somebody. Aegis expires. Going to get the regen from that one. They are healing up quite heavily, and they might just decide to go for it, honestly. They can easily take a lane of barracks here. The Agnums is there for the Coddle. They've got the Vision. They've got the Heals. They've got Monib just out of control at this point. They do pop Nighttime, so they're not going to get the Heals from the Alchemist, or from the um, Illuminates going out. A Blinding Light pushback as well is going to keep them off of it. And a couple more right clicks there. This Blade Mill again going to keep them back. Now, the Drunken Haze is a really good ability to pick up as well in these instances because it's an item that, or rather a skill, that gives you just flat mischance. 70%. And it's so needed against these heroes. Like, OD relies pretty heavily upon that Arcane Orb. He can do a lot via the Arcane, or uh, Sanity's Eclipse, obviously, but... <laughs> dropping his items as well. Oh, God. What a guy. Forehead indeed. Well, there's the Hurricane Pike. A good bit of damage now onto that Rubik. Forces him back, stealing the intelligence. That's minus 8 for him. Plus 12 for the OD. Jenkins destroys the Rubik. He is gone. Forced to buy back. Now Juggernaut in trouble as well. He ends up following the stun. Going to connect now onto that Abaddon. They are going to try and turn it against him. See if they can force out the ulti. It is there now. Although they can probably bring him down off the back of it. Charge through onto Atlas. And now the damage coming in. Sandy's Eclipse Still held for the moment. Omni Slash there onto one, but it ends up getting disabled as they've already used that split. There it is. GG getting called. As Team Red are going to advance to the second day. 
Good luck tomorrow, guys. Good luck against Ritsu. Because that is going to be one of the stacks that they have to face off against. And that is going to do it for the NA action. We're going to now be hopping into the Chinese Dota. And there's a chance, just a chance, that I might even be able to have some buddies joining me as well.